Welcome to the History of North America. I'm Mark Vinette. The first 125 years of England's exploration and colonization attempts in North America paints a vivid picture of ambition, curiosity, greed, religious fervor, and innovation. Let's continue revisiting this century and a quarter of exploits, mishaps, and adventures to try and put in perspective the results obtained from the headlong momentum pushing this small European island nation forward with its daring plans to make its mark in the New World's Northern Hemisphere. Francis Drake was one of the many buccaneers that roamed the shores of North America on behalf of Queen Elizabeth I in the late 1570s. He was an English explorer, sea captain, privateer, slave trader, naval officer, and politician. Drake is best known for his circumnavigation of the world in a single three-year expedition starting in 1577. This included his incursion into the Pacific Ocean, until then an area of exclusive Spanish interest, and his 1579 claim to Nova or New Albion for England, named for the beautiful white cliffs along the bay of Drake's landing spot, an area in what is now the U.S. state of California. To document and assert his claim on California, Sir Francis Drake posted an engraved plate of brass to claim sovereignty for Queen Elizabeth and every successive English monarch. His expedition inaugurated an era of conflict with the Spanish on the western coast of the Americas, an area that had previously been largely unexplored by western shipping. Along with Martin Frobisher's claims in Baffin Island and Humphrey Gilbert's later 1583 claim of Newfoundland, Nova Albion was one of the earliest English territorial claims in the New World. These North American claims were eventually followed by settlement of the Roanoke Colony in 1584 and Jamestown in 1607. Humphrey Gilbert was an English adventurer, explorer, member of parliament, and knighted soldier who served during the reign of Queen Elizabeth I and was a pioneer of the English colonial empire in North America. He was a maternal half-brother of Sir Walter Raleigh and a cousin of Sir Richard Grenville. Sir Humphrey Gilbert set sail with a fleet of five vessels in June 1583. One of the vessels, owned and commanded by Walter Raleigh, turned back owing to lack of provisions. Gilbert's crews were made up of misfits, criminals, and pirates, but in spite of the many problems caused by their lawlessness, the fleet reached the port of St. John's, where he took possession of Newfoundland for the English crown. He claimed authority over the fish stations and levied tax on the fishermen from several countries who worked this rich sea near the Grand Banks of Newfoundland. Within weeks, his fleet departed, having made no attempt to form a settlement due to lack of supplies. During the return voyage, his ship had sight of a sea monster, most probably a giant squid. Nearing the Azores, after ordering a controversial change of course for the fleet, the vessels encountered high waves of heavy seas. Despite the persuasions of others, who wished Gilbert to take to the much larger flagship, Golden Hind, he stayed put and was observed sitting in the stern of his smaller frigate, HMS Squirrel, reading a book believed to be Utopia by Sir Thomas More. Elizabethan England began sending expeditions to coastal North America in the hopes of discovering wealth and riches, or taking possession of the treasure accumulated and transported by Spain. Following Sir Humphrey Gilbert's tragic death in 1583, Queen Elizabeth divided his land charter between his brother Adrian Gilbert and his half-brother Sir Walter Raleigh. Adrian's charter gave him the patent on Newfoundland and all points north, where geographers expected to eventually find a long-sought northwest passage to Asia. Raleigh was awarded the lands to the south, though much of it was already claimed by Spain. Raleigh's 1584 charter specified that he needed to establish a colony by 1591 or lose his right to colonization. 
He was to explore and exploit the territory, and was expected to establish a base from which to send privateers on raids against the treasure fleets of Spain. Despite the broad powers granted to Raleigh, he was forbidden to leave the Queen's side. Instead of personally leading voyages to the Americas, he delegated the missions to his associates and oversaw operations from London of the first voyage to Virginia in 1584. The Sea Dogs was an informal name bestowed upon English privateers who were authorized by Queen Elizabeth I to raid England's enemies, even during times of peace. Carrying letters of mark issued by the English crown, the Sea Dogs frequently attacked both enemy shipping at sea and enemy outposts on land, especially targeting the Spanish in North American waters and ports. One of these celebrated Sea Dogs was seasoned soldier Richard Grenville, the eldest son and heir of Sir Roger Grenville, who was captain of King Henry VIII's warship Mary Rose when it sank in Portsmouth Harbor in 1545. Sir Walter Raleigh, Queen Elizabeth's Knight Lord and Governor of Virginia, planned a first colony and military operation focused on the exploration and evaluation of natural resources of the New World land granted him by his sovereign. A fleet consisting of seven ships departed Plymouth, England in April 1585. When Elizabeth refused to let Raleigh make the voyage to Roanoke Island, his cousin, Sir Richard Grenville, took his place. Arriving in late June, Grenville and his men explored a great deal of territory seeking a site for the colony. The Native Americans in the region observed the Europeans and soon made contact with the English and established friendly relations. The English spoke highly of the tribe's hospitality and the strategic location of the nearby island of Roanoke. The expedition's reports described the region as a pleasant and bountiful land like the Garden of Eden. The tribe that controlled the area met with Grenville and Governor Ralph Lane to provide land for the English settlement on Roanoke Island. Both sides agreed that the island was strategically located for access to the ocean and to avoid detection from Spanish patrols after plundering Spanish ships. Lane began construction of a fort on the north side of the island. By late summer, a fort was built on Roanoke, and late August, Grenville left 107 men with Governor Lane and sailed for England. Days later, in Bermuda, Grenville raided a large Spanish galleon which had become separated from the rest of its fleet. The merchant ship, which Grenville took back to England as a prize, was loaded with enough treasure to make the entire Roanoke expedition profitable, spurring excitement in Queen Elizabeth's court about Raleigh's colonization efforts. The establishment of the Roanoke Colony in Virginia was an attempt by Sir Walter Raleigh to found the first permanent English settlement in North America. The English settlement was built on Roanoke Island in what is now coastal North Carolina. The mysterious disappearance of the colonists remains an enigma to this day. The Anglo-Spanish War was an intermittent conflict that began in 1585 between the kingdoms of Spain and England. The conflict included much English privateering against Spanish treasure ships in the New World and several major sea battles including the Spanish Armada in 1588 which influenced the subsequent exploration, commercialization, settlement and colonization of North America. The Anglo-Spanish War was brought to an end with the Treaty of London in 1604, negotiated between King Philip III of Spain and the new King of England, James I. In the treaty, England and Spain agreed to cease their military interventions in Europe, and the English ended their high seas privateering in the New World. Next time, we continue sailing with England across the ocean to North America's Atlantic coast. I'm Mark Vinette, and I hope you're enjoying the ride. Music